The Acolyte, Episode 6, is here, and it continues to prove one definitive and immutable fact, and that is this, is that Disney Star Wars has become little more than a soulless, boring, $4 billion dry hump of something that was once great. Well, here we go. Let's see if the writing actually gets any better. Ah, the many faces of Amanda Stenberg. Um, by many, I mean one. There's a tracker on Phallic Rock. I guess that was one of the shots that they spent God knows how many millions of dollars to go out uh, by the Canary Islands and Portugal to film some on-location stuff. Pretty scenery, but at this point in the show, what does that really add to things? Does that actually... Does that make up for bad writing up to this point? Does that make up for bad character development? An uninteresting story. This show gets harder and harder every week, honestly, to have to suffer through. Uh, normally by now, with a show of this poor quality, I would have tuned out probably 15 minutes through the first episode. It's especially very hard right now to watch House of the Dragon on Sunday nights and then 48 hours later have to suffer through this. Again, these two shows have very similar budgets, and yet The Acolyte is, is so much lesser. It's, it's not even remotely close. It looks like a bad CW show uh, in terms of its, uh, its execution. And it, it's amazing to me, either Warner Brothers are geniuses, uh, or or Disney is just this pathetic when it comes to narrative design. So it's an unknown planet. Unknown planet is what it said. Again, I hate to say it, just visually... Uh, on the screen, uh, Amanda Stenberg's range is very limited. She just saw her captor, who is the most evil person in the galaxy, and she just had like a little lip curl. It, it, it just, again, there's been very little range from this performance in this entire show. Very little distinction between May and Osha. I, I you know... The director should be demanding more out of the performers unless maybe the performers just don't have any more to give than what we're seeing. Emergency code zero. My whole team is dead. And once again, let's go back. Give credit where credit is due. Uh, Lee Jung Jae's performance in this show is head and shoulders above everybody else's. Um, the facial expressions, the delivery, this is a man who was built to perform. He's built to act. And even with as terrible a script as he was handed in a terribly composed show like this, uh, where the writers seem so disjointed, they can't keep any mystery element in a mystery show together. He still does his best to hammer home every moment that he's given. And and God bless him for it. I must speak to Master Vanestra. Again, here we... Okay, so now this is May. She switched places with Osha. We already know this because, again, the story last week spoon-fed 
everything to us uh, like a bunch of idiots um, suffering through this terribly done show. The facial expressions, they're all dry. They're all mundane. There is, there's just no distinction between May and Osha whatsoever. And uh, this continues to be a problem throughout this show in this performance. There is a much larger threat than we anticipated. Osha, I'm going to reset the transceiver. Okay, stop. Let's talk about this. This is th this absolutely confirms all the jokes I made in episode five. Osha is, you know, she changes clothes or with May. She changes clothes with Osha. May is now on the ship. She walked up to to Seoul in last week's episode. Seoul was barely cognizant on the ground. He was just coming out of a stupor. He was waking up. May was already there. She could have killed him right there on the planet. There was no reason. She's got a knife. Just kill him. That's what she wanted to do. She went from, I don't want to kill the Jedi, to let me turn myself into the Jedi and Kalnaka, to screw that, I'm retarded. Let me go back to wanting to hate the Jedi again. No explanation from the writing team whatsoever. All of this happened within a span of 24 hours in story time, which is even more ridiculous. Um, and, and Osha didn't kill him on the ground, or May didn't kill him on the ground last week. Now May's going to kill him in the ship or try to. Again, another missed opportunity. You can't write scenes the way that you do, execute them the way that you do, and then not expect rational thinking people to question the dumb decisions here. Take the wheel. Why did she just take the wheel? Because he said it? She was coming up behind him with a knife, ready to assassinate him. Why didn't she just do it? What, what, what stopped her from doing it? That would have taken care of the rest of her mission there. All four of the Jedi would have been dead. I, but we needed to have a seventh and eighth episode, Valiant. Don't you get it? The plot had to happen. If you combined the performances of literally everyone else in this show and then multiplied it by 10, you might get close to getting to what Lee Jung Jae delivers. It's, it's uncanny. It's just how bad the rest of this cast was. When the truly bad guys are no longer mysterious, they just become boring. He's going to go skinny dipping in front of Osha for... To what? Arouse her? Everybody's sneaking around with knives. Even the two sisters, both sneaking around with knives. No distinction. I just... <laughs> Do we really need to see a Sith taking a bath? Or, or, I mean... How does it feel? Feels good, doesn't it? Did you kill Sol? No. Did you kill May? No. <sighs> it's one of the driest scenes. I mean, I I've seen plenty of scenes over the years in film and television where you have encounters like this for the first time, you're really setting up a moment of tension that does basically nothing. And, and quite honestly, it's because both of these actors just deliver very flat performances. There's no gravity to it. I, the, the delivery of, of the lines is just whatever. I could go watch a bunch of TikTok videos that, that do the same thing. Again, you look at the performance and the writing in this show, compared to right now house of the dragon for the same budget 
and these two shows could not be further apart. It's it's just it's unbelievable. Disney has got to get a handle on their production finance department. With the way this show looks, with the writing and with the performance delivery, this show they shouldn't have spent more than 50 or 60 million dollars on. It wasn't worth more than that. Um, and this is just it just keeps getting more depressing every week to watch this go by. Y you can't hire what, what is tantamount to social media stars uh, to do the jobs of professional, talented actors in much the same way that the Walt Disney Company has been but shouldn't be hiring a bunch of kids off of Tumblr to be animation artists for Walt Disney Animation and Pixar. You saved us, Sosha. You saved me. That man, he corrupted your sister. Oh, now she's going to flip again. This will be the fourth flip for May. Oh, God. I'm sorry. It's time for me to face the High Council. Oh. To tell them everything. Everything? Why can't she ever change her face? My God! But I worry his fear has convinced so many. The review should not be cause for alarm. Apologies, Senator. I must go. But thank you for your update. What is it, Mark? We received a distress call from what Master the heck Soul. Was that? Apparently, he's on a mission in the Outer Rim. What did he say? There were casualties. How? Oh my God! How many little beta bitch boys are we gonna have in this show? Seriously, is there? It, well, especially the white ones, I guess. Um, how many? Little scrawny. <laughs> this is how you make a strong whammon. Make all the men as weak as a piece of loose leaf paper. Connection was faulty, but, but it sounded like the, the entire team. You speak as if you were a Jedi. I was a long time ago. If you keep me here, Sol comes to you. He's found me before. And his strength in the Force is very powerful. That's your strength in the Force, Osha. Someone ought to teach you that. The many boring faces of Amanda Stenberg. Hey, 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 relax, relax, hey, 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 relax, okay? Oh, no, no, no. By all means, by all means, let him hump your leg. Uh, just let him finish. Oh, he finished. He definitely finished. Wow. He actually... What if I reset you to factory settings? Hmm? I can't even. I can't even. Glad to know she can take one in the face. Oh my god. Enough with these stupid things. How much money did they spend on the shots of what these dumb things? What did you mean by things? strength in the- Below the surface of consciousness are powerful emotions. Anger. Fear. Loss. That's the path to the dark side. Semantics. You murdered my friends. I killed Jedi. You killed Yord. I'm not my sister. I'm not that easily corrupted. Oh my god, you please find a different face! Do it. Turn it on. A Jedi doesn't attack the unarmed. Why do you still think of yourself as a Jedi? He's they a mass murderer. You. What is this bullshit? It's not true. Why aren't you a Jedi, Osha? Because I failed! I lost everything. Osha, you lose everything. That's when you're finally free. You know, I have to wonder. Um, it, it seems that completely underdeveloped characters, bad writing, and especially flat, monotone, singular expression performances from female actors or actresses in especially more recent Star Wars products on Disney Plus, 
they all seem to be the same thing. We saw it in Ahsoka. Now we're seeing it here. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. Are we are we teaching actors to just be deadpan and deliver every line deadpan with the same expression, or to say you know sigh and cross your arms and I, it just does somebody at Lucasfilm think this is actually right? Do they think this is how you do it? I, I really again. I encourage people at the Walt Disney Company and especially the women at Lucasfilm that run that company, go look at what the women are doing at House of the Dragon. Go look at what the women are doing at Warner Brothers, at your competitors. And for the love of God, fix your shit. Please. This is painful to watch. This is this is absolutely painful to get through. Have you heard from Master Soul? Uh, no, but our team is ready to and we depart in 20. Are you joining us on the mission, Master? Oh my God, I swear to God, if this guy whips out a pride flag in the middle of this episode, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Is there is there a man besides Lee Jung Jae in this entire show? To the outer rim, it's just, you get nauseous when you travel through hyperspace. I don't get sick. Oh my god. I find it unsettling. But Master, I'm sure that these casualties They're are due walking to the down the hall. This is officially they a pride need to parade. This person. Oh. Please kill this thing. Had to restart the system. Should be five minutes or so. I I I've got to ask at this point. How is it that Soul, who, who has been reading thoughts and things like this, this has been a thing in this show. How is it at this point, it's been a day or so since they left the planet, that Soul does not recognize this person as not being Osha? <laughs> I mean, again, if you're going to establish things in this show, as being a force power that nobody's seen before, you've got to be consistent with it. So I hope right here that that should be clicking in. It seems like it's already been too long, just like it took too long to kill Jackie, but okay. I had to lose a lot of myself in order to become a Jedi. I'm sorry if you felt that way. How could I feel any other way? Have you told me everything that happened on Brentok? You are very young. Yeah, you're going to wait till episode eight for that one. By yourself. My name is... Finally. Okay. So whatever she said, that clued him in. Master Soul, the rescue team is on their way. Everything all right, Master? What did they say? Seems an Umbramoth colony hatched last night and wreaked havoc on a local settlement. Why did they? If the Jedi why did they been cast anywhere near this guy? Colony, Please. Large amount of why did they cast this guy? It could. God, I'd feel less irritation if I dragged sandpaper across my ass. Do you give the same pitch to my sister? I made a mistake with me. What do you want? The power of two. Kurtosis. Handy against lightsabers, but also a sensory deprivation headpiece. Like we used as young like. But you should learn to trust yourself. Wait. All right. I just wanted to make sure that I was checking and counting the diversity in the scene here. Thank God he's dead. Thank God Yord is dead. And she doesn't even care. Just walking by dead Padawans, dead Jedi Knights. She's like, okay, got it. Okay. Taking inventory. 
No sign of Osha or her twin. They must have survived somehow. None of them have like. What happened here? There. What? What do you see? There. <laughs> Come on. There's four people here. At least two of them, if not three of them, you would expect. This is a Padawan. Never would have seen anything like this. Seeing Jedi Knights and Jedi Masters dead, strewn all over the forest floor. And he's got I, no reaction. None. None. Come on. Come on. How are you putting these shows together? And you're not demanding that the cast... Hey, you guys, y'all have to lend some gravity to the scene. You, you have got to be terrified of what you're seeing. Something, at least one or two of you has to be. One in particular. I Something here. Give me something. This is the point we keep making that it's almost impossible to connect with any character in this show because they're all so dead. Every character, every performance in this show has been as dead dead as apart from Lee Jung Jae has been as dead as every one of these damn stupid red shirt Jedi's lying on this forest floor. It's, it's just terrible. His sole aim was to leave no survivors. Oh, the lightsaber whip. By a lightsaber. Yay. What? You don't think Master Soul was responsible. That is quite the accusation. We're talking about over $20 million per episode. And, and I feel like there should have been a lot more in terms of makeup, costuming, sets, everything for this whole production. I don't know where this money got pissed away, but apparently it either wasn't on the show or they were grossly overpaying for what they got. Either way, this is just terrible production management. We have a lot to do. But first, you and I are going to talk. This episode has been boring. And I know there are slow grind TV shows, slow grind episodes out there. There's slow grind episodes of House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones. The difference is, is that up to that point and even throughout that episode, the story is still moving. There are still developments with character. There's still movement in the plot. There's something going on. Again, here, everything's just still really, really super flat. I mean... They're trying to advance the story, and I get that. And they're trying to, oh, Soul discovers this is really May. And now we're having this relationship bonding moment between Osha and, and Kimir, or whatever the hell his name is. I Again, it's not delivered well at all. Are you kidding me? Is she Yeah, she's going to do it. Why? 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 There's no explanation for this. None. Oh, for God's sake. This is just dumb. Okay. I the episode is boring. The deliveries and the performances are flat as can be. Amanda Stenberg can't act. Uh she has no range of expression whatsoever. It's just terrible. And at the end of this episode now, we're expected to believe that as we've watched May inexplicably flip and flop and flip and flop back and forth in the span of like 24 hours of actual story time, like a day in this story. 
Now, all of a sudden, Osha, who has been steadfast up to this point, she gets one speech from Kamir or whatever, Sith donkey, and I, oh, now she's like, maybe he's got a point. Let me try this helmet on again. <laughs> who the piss is writing this show? Seriously, who the piss is writing this show? This is terrible. None of these writers should ever be hired again. You're not setting up anything. You're just delivering the plot. You're just slapping it in our faces, saying, look, this happened. Look, this happened. Look, this. There's nothing here to actually get intelligent thinking people to buy into any of this. This is terrible. If you, Disney, from me to you, if you want to actually do a really good show that is headlined and led by strong women, again, look to House of the Dragon. You've got Olivia Cook and Emmon Darcy over there. Team Green, Team Black. Those women are carrying the weight of that show on their shoulders. And the writing is superb. The acting is superb. And I just, again, it's very difficult right now in the same point in time to go from watching that kind of show on a Sunday night to trying to finish covering this absolute trash fire called the Acolyte. I'm just, if they do this thing where maybe becomes the good twin and OSHA suddenly becomes evil or God knows what happens. I mean, it's already kind of starting to happen now. You can kind of see it. Um, <clears throat> Maybe there's a reason for it, but the problem is there aren't many reasons given for anything that happens in this show up to this point. I'm not expecting anything of any merit to be given from here forward. Nothing has been shown in Osha's character up to this moment as to why she would suddenly be seeming like she's changing her mind. It's just because the plot needed to happen, I guess. Um, my God. I don't know if I'm going to make it through the last two episodes. I'm going to do my best. But you guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk about this more on the live shows. Uh, this is a trash fire. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.